Ferrari in the British GT Championship at Alton Park. The Marcus on pole with Andy Purvis at the wheel. The Black Lister alongside him, Dave Warnock, second place. The TBR Speed 12 of Ian McKellar and the Viper of John Cleland, third and fourth on the grid. Riding with John Cleland out of Deer Leap. There is the Speed 12 ahead. Trying to get side by side on the grid for the rolling start as the safety car pulls off. They're looking for the green lights, they get them. And the yellow Marcus leads the charge down to the first corner. The Lister's on the outside. And we're with Chris Ellis in the Lotus. Tries to get inside Cleland as the TDR gets sideways. Cleland in fourth place in the X Chamberlain Viper run by the Brookspeed team. Down the hill they come. Dabber breaks from Cleland. Bottom of Cascades. It's turning left and out into the country. It's the Marcus that leads. So. Out front, Andy Purvis from pole position for the first time of asking. And into the pits comes the GT Class Viper of Neil Cunningham, the Aussie, with a very over-rich car. Marcus leads now from the TVR Speed 12. John Cleland in third place behind Ian McKellar. Where's the Lister? Well, it's dropped right down in the field. It's now behind the Lotus and the best of the Porsches, riding now with Mark Sumter. And the Lister in deep, deep trouble. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, the car was retired from the last race at Croft as it got beached on the curbs after a spin. John Cleland now right behind the TBR in third place. There's the TBR speed 12. He goes down the inside. Oh, he's oh, very, very deep under braking. Got very sideways indeed, but he got past him. Cleland, the X 2 litre Vauxhall Touring Car British champion. Well, the race is certainly over for the number one car. The Lister is out, Andy Purvis leads now. John Cleland in second place, and the Marcos looking to be dwarfed by the Viper. Marcos with its 5.7 litre V8, and the Viper with its 8 litre V10. A taller car all round, look at it. It's waist high, the Marcos, and Cleland goes around the outside at Lodge, Oof, and just gets hit by the Lotus. Cleland trying desperately to get it all sorted out. The Marcos continues. Second place, the TVR Speed 12. And Cleland finding the right gear. Everybody else trying desperately to weave around him. Now he gets it going again. And there is the Lotus on the side of the track. And Cleland has got a badly deranged Viper. That was have to head to the pits now, I'm sure. Oh my goodness, look at the right rear wheel. Suspension is shattered and there's no way he can continue. Cleland into the pits and surely the race is over for that car. Well, the Lotus continues. We saw in round two at Croft that it can actually be quite badly damaged looking out the front and continue. Again, looking to be very, very overchoked though. Ian McKellar goes down the inside of the race leader to take away that first place. So he moves up into the lead in the blue speed 12 and it's Tim Harvey in the ex Labra competition Porsche 911 that is making the moves for third place. Well, Cleland gets out of the car and he'll wander round to inspect the damage. I don't think he'll be too happy to retire so early on. McKellar leads then, Purvis in second place, but Tim Harvey coming down the inside, and like Cleland, Harvey an ex-British touring car champion. And Harvey, and also uh, a British long racing endurance champion, won the British C2 championship back in the late 80s. More trouble in the 28 team. Neil Cunningham still at the pits, and this is really a race ending problem, I think. Speed 12 leads then, Ian McKellar, Tim Harvey in second place in the Porsche. Third place is the man who was on pole, Andy Purvis in the Marcus. And there comes Purvis and the battle behind, fourth and fifth place on the racetrack and also for first and second in the GTO class. We're riding with Callum Lockie in his Marcus LM600 and ahead of him is the GTO class TVR Speed 6. Unlike the Speed 12, that's a privately built car run by Martin Short, his little team in Hertfordshire that prepares just a few TVR Tuscan racers in the TVR Tuscan Spec Championship, also building this unique Speed 6. Fabulous sound from its straight six engine, but it just can't compete with the bigger horsepower advantage of the Callum Lockie and Martin Byford Mantara LM600. Well, they're in different classes as well. Lockie in the main GT class, the GTO category is where the Speed 6 races and all these guys as well. A three-way battle in the GTO category. 
Ian McKellar leads then from Tim Harvey, the top two all on their own, and as a result largely of this incident at the end of the first lap, as John Cleland in the Viper comes around the outside of the leader, Andy Purvis in the Marcus, and he makes contact there, breaks the rear suspension as he spins round, Purvis continues, the speed 12 goes by, Harvey squeaks around the outside, the Lotus can't quite find a gap, and as a result, he drops down the order. Here is Chris Ellis then, trying to make up for time again, as he was at Croft with a front bodywork damaged Lotus. Well, ahead of him, one of the Marcus Mantaras, and the second of the Par Motorsport Vipers there with a the problem. And it sounds like Ellis has got a problem with the gearbox of the Lotus. What is the problem for the 48 car of Killian Koenig? They're pulling off. Their teammates already in the pits. So it's a very bad weekend here at Alton Park for Par Motorsports, a bad weekend for the Lotus as well. But at the moment, it's a good weekend for the TVR Speed 12 because Ian McKellar Jr. leads the race. Callum Lockie now, this is the battle for third place. Ahead of him is Peter Cook's white and red Porsche. And ahead of that is the man who started on pole position, Andy Purvis in the Marcos, Callum Lockie's teammate for the weekend. Well, Lockie normally shares Coroyza's car. That's been damaged in another GT race. He didn't have the option to run that. Sharing with Martin Byford. Byford's regular driver uh, had uh, major surgery before the start of the season. Not well enough to drive at the moment. David Leslie raced that car last time out at Croft. And it's a chance now for Callum Lockie to get more points on the board. Well, Lockie had a great weekend at Croft with the Coroyza car. Romped away to victory. His first in the GT Championship. And now he's looking for third place on the tail of this three-way battle. So Andy Purvis out front and really under pressure from Peter Cook as they come through Ireland. Cook around the outside and then to the inside at the Shell Oils hairpin. Callum will be very careful indeed not to knock off his teammate here. But it does seem as though the setup on the Lucky Byford car is slightly better than that on the Purvis machine. Maybe as a result of that first lap scuffle with Cleland. As a direct result of that first lap scuffle, in comes the Lotus. Its race, I think, is probably going to be over. This is certainly an unscheduled pit stop. Plenty of silver tank tape being used to try and hold on the bodywork. On the high speed sweeps of Alton Park, you don't really want to lose much more downforce than you can, but the rear bodywork's off. Oh dear, and that is never a good sign on the Lotus. It looks as though they've got more major problems than that. They're checking inside to see what's up. Riding again with Callum Lockie. This is for fourth. Andy Purvis ahead of him. And out front now, Peter Cook. That's the third place Porsche. Lockie down the inside for fourth place. Gets past Purvis. Holds it together on the inside line. The mighty Chevrolet V8 under the hood. Hurling the car across the start-finish line. Callum Lockie on his own now. And that means Andy Purvis has gone into the pits. Well, the pit stop window not open yet. There is a compulsory pit stop for all cars in the race, but Purvis comes in now, and I do think he has got longer lasting damage than just being slowed down by John Cleland. Engine's gone, says Andy Purvis, and that sounds like the end of that one. Missing the uh, chicane here, Neil Woodford in the Ferrari 355. And here is the GTO class battle out front, the 59 machine, and that's Adam Simmons. He's got the two PK Motorsport Porsches right behind him. 42 car is bike ace Terry Reimer, 44 is Marcus Fothergill. Oh dear, it's very close indeed. Terry Reimer has really turned on a few excellent racing car performances when he's been racing as a guest driver while he was still riding uh, motorcycles. The TT Ace, clearly very, very adept behind the wheel as well. Back in the group there, the 77 car of Mark Sumter. Normally shares with Mike Jordan. He's got Chris Goodwin as his partner this weekend. They won the class in the opening two rounds of the championship. And they'll be hoping to work their way up the order as well. Well, the GTO cars, formerly the GT3 category, currently being led by this machine, the 55 car, the TVR Speed 6, Rob Barth. Opens the door, hands over to Martin Short. Pitch change here for Adam Simmons, and he hands over to Formula 3 ace Warren Hughes. And now it all starts. Chris Goodwin is waiting. Raced a McLaren F1 last year in the GT Series. And he gets into the 77 car, taking over from Mark Sumter. Out goes the Speed 6. Well, it won't immediately rejoin as the class leader, but it should do once all the pit stops have happened. So 
Slightly longer stop, I think, for the 77 car, and they get out right behind Warren Hughes. Warren Hughes with Chris Goodwin on his tail now. Goodwin more experienced in GT racing terms, but nothing to choose between the two of them, I don't think, on top speed. And now the race leaders right behind them. GTO cars fresh out of the pit, squabbling for position. They've got Ian McKellar Jr. right behind in the TBR Tuscan Speed 12. Let's see it go pouring past. Well, the road car reputed to have 880 brake horsepower from its V12 engine. They had to detune that considerably to race. The restrictors on it, well, they reckon in the paddock, the car's still producing 700 horsepower. My goodness, what a phenomenal amount. Tim Harvey holding on in second place there in car number three in a different class to the two Porsches ahead of him, even though outwardly they're not too dissimilar. Well, here is just before the pit stops, Adam Simmons in the 59 car, almost coming to grief as Terry Reimer gets too deep down the inside to slow himself down properly. Bit of rubbing there, but no damage done. Martin Byford strapped into the Marcus that came in in the hands of Callum Lockie in fourth place. Getting ready to rejoin. Oh, loses the engine, fires it up again, and off he goes back into the race. The race leader in amongst cars that have already stopped, but he's got the second place man, Tim Harvey, right behind him. Ian McKellar in the speed 12, heading for the pits. Yes, he is indeed. Race leader comes in. There's Martin Byford, came in from fourth with that car to make its pit stop and now back out on the track. Tim Harvey, now the race leader, still to stop in that car. And here comes Ian McKellar, ready to hand over to Bobby Verdon Road, longtime rival in the TVR Tuscan Championship and teammates now in TVR's GT Racing Project. And look at those door bars there, making it very hard to squeeze in. Chris Goodwin in the 77 car. He has got his sights on the man ahead of him, Warren Hughes. The Geordie Formula 3 ace, the white Porsche right ahead of him. This is a GTO class battle. Oh, a little bit of a lock up there as they came into Lodge through Deer Leap. Goodwin had to back out a little bit there in the 77 machine, so nothing gained, nothing lost in the battle. Into Old Hall, the first corner. Heading down the hill through Cascades, they'll go flat out here. And ahead of them is the 61 machine. This is the Charlie Butler Henderson, Chris Ryan Marcus, another of the GTO cars. And again, more trouble for the Par Motorsport machine. This car came in at the end of lap one, the Neil Cunningham Stephen Day car, and still not sounding happy with itself. Yet to stop, the orange flash on the side of the car tells you that. Number 14, they're now up to about third place overall, Robert Babakin and Brian Robinson, because most of the cars ahead of them have stopped. See the little flash being torn off the door there? It's stuck on with Velcro, and once that's disappeared, the spectators and everybody else knows that the car has stopped. Very swift change indeed for Marcus Fothergill, handing over to Paul Fuller in the 44 car. Fuller keeps the engine well alive. Here comes Martin Byford again. It's the better placed of the Marcus Mantara LM600. Callum Lockie started it, and in comes the race leader, Tim Harvey now, jumps out. In gets Mike Yules. Well, Yules tightening up the belts, firing up the engine, and away he goes. Looked a little bit haphazard that, didn't it? Not quite as smooth as some of the others, as though Mike Yules wasn't quite ready for it. 42 and 44, the two PK Motorsport cars, Terry Reimer, Jeff Lister's car, ahead of Marcus Fothergill and Paul Fuller, and once more, scratched heads in the Palm Motorsport camp. Having a dreadful time this weekend. GTO battle. Warren Hughes goes down the inside. Oh, a bit more rubbing there. The Geordie gets past the PK car. No, he doesn't. He gets caught across the nose of it and he spun. That means Chris Goodwin picks up two spots there. So he should now be third in GTO, but worried faces on the pit wall of the Speed 6 machine. Here it is. This is the GTO class leader. Oh, smoking heavily though. Oh dear, oh dear. A brand new car only just finished on the Friday morning, the early hours of the Friday morning of the Croft race weekend. Ran superbly there, but it is a brand new machine and problems for the 44 car as well. Leaking fluid all over from the front, nose-mounted radiators, and there behind is Warren Hughes. Speed 6 comes towards us, 
And he's got Jeff Lister right on his tail. Chris Goodwin going, come on, get out of the way to Brian Robinson's yellow Porsche. That's in the GT class, by the way. That's the main class, not the GTO class. That's one of the older GT2 Porsches. And Goodwin's car more aerodynamic and clearly quicker. But Goodwin busy trying to wave him by and get himself past on the grass to stay on the heels of the GTO class leading battle ahead of him. Well, Goodwin finally makes it through. I should think his uh, temperature has gone up a few degrees. Here is Martin, short, under pressure, and he sounds definitely like he's got a major gearbox problem there. Jeff Lister goes around the outside in 42. Short will fight this all the way until there are no gears left in the transmission at all, but he is smoking heavily. And he's trying desperately to find gears in the corners. And the stench of burning gearbox oil must be very strong inside the Speed 6. I'm sure he knows exactly what's going on in that car. Well, further back, headlights ablaze. Another GTO battle. Is this Warren Hughes down the inside? Yes, it is. Oh, just gets past the 44 car. Still leaking water, the 44 car, and that will push the engine temperatures right up. Late evening sunshine now. Pit stops are over. And Mike Yules leads the race in a Porsche. Well, surely nobody would have foreseen that at the beginning of the season, that an old-style GT2 Porsche would lead the big new cars, but he spins it off. Through goes Bobby Verden Rowe in the TVR. And Yules outbreaking himself into the Fulston chicane. So Bobby Verden Rowe holds the lead. The TVR team listening on the radio. Warren Hughes ahead. Oh, Hughes leaking fluids as well all over the road there as he tries to slow down and stay out of the race leader's way. Takes to the grass on the inside of Druids. That's a very gentlemanly and selfless act. But he's struggling now to get back to the pits. So too, I think, will Martin Short. Now, billowing clouds of smoke in the car. Maybe one lap too far. He's coming to a grinding halt. He cannot see a thing. Gearbox oil alight underneath the transmission. Ah, well, I told you he would take it as far as it could possibly go. And that's exactly what he did. And he will be absolutely choking in there. Switching everything off. It's his baby, this car. He's saying to the marshals, don't you dare cover it in foam. Do not touch my car. Well, Warren Hughes in the Surtec pits. And that is race over for him. Fluid all over the right front tyre in the corners as the radiators leak away precious life. 42 versus 77. This is another GTO battle. Jeff Lister, the class leader. And 77, Chris Goodwin, his first drive in this car, his first drive in the championship this year. Raced half of last British GT season in McLaren F1 V12. Out front overall then, Bobby Verden Rowe. 27 car, TVR's Speed 12. Fabulous looking, fabulous sounding, and awesomely powerful monster. A behemoth of the racetrack, no doubt about it. Oh, second place, uh, popping and banging there from the list of going down the hill. Second place is Mike Yules in the Porsche 911 GT2. Of course, far more well-proven and developed car with years of racing experience in private and factory hands behind it. The Speed 12 though still out front, heading down towards Ireland. And here is the GTO class leader, Chris Goodwin, having a great reintroduction to British GT racing. Through Ireland and down to the Shell Oils hairpin. Bobby Verden Rowe, the race leader in the TBR. Mike Yules in second place, having spun away the lead just beyond this stage. And Bobby Verden Rowe is slowing down. Verden Rowe slowing in the howling V12. He's just chugging along now. Mike Yules takes back the race lead at exactly almost the same place where he lost it. And Grim faces on the TVR pit wall. The car is running out of fuel. Bobby Verden Road desperately weaving from side to side to try and slosh some fuel around to the fuel pickup in the bottom of the tank. He's got half a lap before he'll even get back to the pits, never mind finish the race, and he's not going to make it. For Verden Road, it's going to be a long, hot, disappointing and sweaty walk back. Biggest disappointment of all, they were only a couple of minutes from the end of the race. Mike Yule's back in front by a country mile, about to start his final lap as the race leader. Tim Harvey and the rest of the team will be on the pit wall egging him on. There they go, waving away. He's got one lap to go and he can effectively push it round from here. What a massive margin he's got. 
TVR Speed 12 running short on fuel. Well, one of the things with new cars is it does take a while to work out accurate heavy race fuel consumption. Yules out front, the GTO battle being led by Chris Goodwin. Right behind him, Jeff Lister in the car that was started by Terry Reimer. Oh, pursed lips, Tim Harvey waiting for the reappearance of Mike Yules. Half a lap to go and they'll win the race. Here comes Yules. Oh, popping and banging. Mike Yules is running out of fuel as well. He's got enough to get him down the straight. Under the Bailey Bridge he goes down to Lodge Corner for the last time. One, two more corners ahead of him. Through Lodge he goes. Will it pick up down and back out of Deer Leap? Yes, it does. My goodness, perilously close to running out, but instead it's the chequered flag that stops Mike Yules in his tracks. Tim Harvey and the team applaud. Well, a great opening stint by Harvey, really kept the car in it. Mike Yule's there to pick up the pieces. Well, they win from Callum Lockie and Martin Byford with Cook and Hindley in third place. Not only their trophies for winning the GT Championship, but the famous and historic Alton Park Gold Cup goes to them as well, following in the footsteps of many, many famous names who have won that trophy over the years. So here is the top half dozen then. Sumter and Goodwin winning in GTO from Reimer and Lister, fourth and fifth overall respectively. And for the championships, the GT drivers still headed by Callum Lockie. Fellow Marcus driver Martin Byford chases him. Sumter leads for Porsche ahead of his teammate Jordan. Lister tied in equal second.